Hi, everyone, and welcome back to the continuation of the friend sim slash hive swap troll fridge stuck. I don't have a planned name for this series, do I? Oh, well. Continuing on in blood color, we have the Bronze Bloods. Skyla's first name has a few possible meanings to it, if that's how it's pronounced. The Swedish word Quila translates directly to blame in English. This is possibly connected to how in the second bad ending of her friend Sim route, where every Lucis on her ranch, including her own collie lady, gets stolen by rustlers, she becomes distraught, blaming the reader and ultimately herself for trusting your judgment. Then there's the possible name meaning that I kept jumping to. I keep trying to say Skilla, and I'm like, that is a different beast entirely. But I'm sure. Skilla, or Scylla, is an ancient Greek monster, mostly known for her appearance in Homer's Odyssey. Scylla's body was composed mostly of various animal parts, including six snake-like necks, twelve tentacle legs, a cat's tail, and six dog heads encircling her stomach like a ring. Considering that Skyla is a rancher of Lucy, the troll race's animal caretakers, this could be a connection between the two. Or we could take the simplest route and assume that Skyla is a version of the name Skyla. As a name, Skyla can mean different things, depending on who you ask. Scholar, sheltering, cloud, or heck, even just the sky itself. And let me just say, as a coastal Californian who is now a Texas citizen, there is so much blue sky around here. What? What even is? Skyla's last name, however... Okay. The Homestuck Wiki claims that in the Uzbek language, Koriga roughly translates to cousin. This would be fitting, considering that Calling someone cuz or cousin is just so dang country, y'all. But I don't know where the wiki is getting this information. I've been searching through half a dozen Uzbek dictionaries and language websites for this one random Uzbeki word to confirm what they've said was true, but I was unable to find anything close. So yeah. I don't know where her last name comes from or what it means, so let's just move on. According to Skyla's troll call, she is a vegetarian. Somehow. Allow me to put on my skepticals. Aren't grub cakes, you know, made from grubs? Like baby troll grubs. What in tarnation? Actually, the troll call says, what is tarnation? Tarnation is just an old-fashioned way of saying damnation, if you needed to know. <sighs> Design-wise, Skyla's horns are based on the Texas Longhorn, the state's large animal. As for her clothes, she's wearing the whole rancher's fit. Gloves, chaps, and long sleeve button-ups protect ranchers from the sun, mud, and thorns that are so prevalent on their land. Skyla's sign is Taurus, the Prosperous, making her a potential prospect dreamer and a hero of time. The Homestuck 2021 calendar even showed her ascended as a knight of time, fighting a snail for some reason. Not a canon piece, obviously, because, you know, Scrub hadn't started yet. As for the subject matter, not even the Smithsonian understands why some medieval manuscripts show knights fighting snails. So I'm not even gonna try. Aside from her premiere, Skyla makes a few more appearances in Friend Sim. She plays a major role on Connell Okama's route in Volume 7, where she hires the mercenary to stop the Lucis rustlers for good. Connell even seems to develop a pitched crush on Skyla, 
but it's unknown if Skyla reciprocates the feeling. She later appears in the backgrounds of both Lank's parties in Volume 18. Skyla also appears in Hive Swap Act 2 on the Rustblood car, lingering close to the Lucis Caboose. That's a fun word. Lucis Caboose. She laments that Lady is not feeling well, possibly near to death, leading Joey, Claire, amateur veterinarian, to offer to search for medicine for the ailing dog. Don't worry, girl. I'm sure your Lucis will not have to suffer for long. Actually, you can heal Lady using the med kit on Skyla after you get Marty Hotek to move out of the way of the exit. This earns you the achievement Vet Tech. Also, Skyla assumes that Joey is a Lucis at first because of her pale skin. <sighs> Originally, I assumed that Vicaray's first name was a reference to Valkyries, flying women warriors of Norse myth who brought dying valiant soldiers to Valhalla due to Vicaray's flying obsession. Valkyries were also known as Wishmaids due to their connection to Odin, the Wish Granter. And Vicare is a dreamer extraordinaire, but no one else seems to have made this connection, so let's see what the other more likely candidates are. In Norway, there are legends of a king named Vikar, whose ships could not sail due to lack of wind. Lots were cast to find the human worthy enough to be sacrificed to the gods for their favor, and Vikar himself was chosen. Vikar's advisor suggested a mock hanging, but after being prompted by Odin, who was really out for king blood that day, the fakey fakey death took a sudden magic turn. The calf intestines transformed into real rope around his neck, the stump under Vikar's feet fell over, and the reed he was supposed to be stabbed with turned into a real ouchy sword. So yeah, not looking so good for Vikar, eh, here. What's the other possibility? Vicare literally translates from the Etruscan language as Icarus. As in Icarus, the boy with wax wings who ignored his father's advice, flew too close to the sun, and died crashing into the sea. Well, crap. Now, Vicare's last name comes from ratites, large flightless birds like the ostrich, cassowary, kiwi, or Vicare's own lucis, canary. These particular birds lack a specific bone on their sternum called the keel, which means even if they had the wingspan for it, they would not have the muscle to fly. The word ratite, in fact, comes from the word raft. A ship without a keel. Which is funny. Vicare is interested in airplanes, which are flying ships. Vicare's whole personality is wrapped up in flying and dreams of flying. And probably cliff diving afterward. Well, his original troll call also outed him as a Hatch to Dance fan. But seriously, what self-respecting troll isn't an H2D stan? As for his design, a fun detail I like is that his long horns fly back near the top, like they're being blown by the breeze. For clothing, Vicare is dressed in full 1940s aviator garb, while his jacket, scarf, and goggled cap remain unchanged throughout his many design passes, his sign has not. Vicare has had at least three different signs. Seemingly, his earliest was Taurus, the unmapped, and was later changed to True Taurus, the unfledged, like Tavros. But his final design shows that his true sign is Tarza, sign of the Revealer, making Vicare a Durst Dreamer and a potential hero of mind. Wait a minute. In Friend Sim, we send Vicare flying off a cliff, and it ends up with him breaking some bones. Just like Vriska did for Tavros. And that was the good ending. Vicare's route is the first Friend Sim conquest to have three bad endings that you can stumble into. The first is if you initially admit that you like space travel. 
he ditches you. The second is when you're kicked out of his hive for telling the troll that airplanes exist. And the third is when you decide to stay in his hive and he shows you his designs for a skyship. The structures he shows are all made up of bones, since that's all the materials he has available to him. There is a big misunderstanding about if the reader's bones would be used in the design, thereby insulting Vicare and ending the route early. Funnily, ratites can't fly because of their bones, while Vicare ratite is literally trying to fly with bones. As for other appearances, Vicare shows up as a cameo character in Hive Swap Act 2 on the Rusty Train Car. He continues to talk about flying in his typical, confounding, old-timey announcer voice, much to the annoyance of Joey. Keep talking to him throughout the journey, and Joey eventually erupts. This is most likely because Vicare talks in a similar way to her father, Jake Harley. She still has some baggage to unload there. Chixie's first name is most likely referencing the group formerly known as the Dixie Chicks, a country western band. This can be seen when the reader notes that Chixie's singing voice has a bit of a country twang. Her last name, if pronounced with a French accent, curse you French language, sounds similar to the word rhymer. Her full name could also be a joke in itself. Cheesy rhymer. Ugh. Singer-songwriter is Chixie's gimmick, from her voice speaking with a lilt to her typing quirk separating clauses with forward slashes, as if they were song lyrics. Her troll call card from February 2018 sets her up as a struggling beginner, self-promoting like crazy and blocking anything but praise, most likely for her own morale. The new promotional bullet points in December of that same year show that Chixie has now become a more popular entertainer, with friends in high places. High enough to become one of the opening acts for Javik Week, at least. She is also more popular than she knows, since it seems that even certain high bloods, like Marvis Sholoto, are aware of her double identity as The Mask, a revolutionary rapper. Even Chixie admits that a low blood seeking fame and becoming popular is a bit of an oxymoron. Her personality seems to show this, as she's initially sheepish towards strangers and eager to please those who would help further her career, but also is easily despondent and quickly angered, often acting before she can think. Like how she initially puts on the mask to rap at the high blood band who stole her songs. Chixie is another troll who went through some design changes. Her original appearance even had her as a different blood color. As a burgundy blood, Chixie's design was Arga, the trailblazer, most likely referencing her career as a low blood performer. Arga made her a Durst Dreamer and a potential hero of space. But in her current bronze blood design, her sign is Tara, the transient, making her a prospect dreamer and a potential hero of mind. Saying something is transient means that it's temporary and impermanent. So I'm not sure if that's a good sign for our girl. As for her friend sim route, Chixie's is one of the few to have multiple good endings. Whether allowing her to wallow in her misery backstage, or witnessing the birth of the mask and having the reader become Chixie's Moirail, both are considered good. But it's her performance as the mask that is definitely the canon ending. In the second good ending, Chixie meets a mysterious troll in a hoodie and shades, who says he'll be in touch with her. Fan theorists at the time believed that the cool troll was Domek, Resistance leader and Moirail 2 resident good boy Zephros Trito from Hive Swap Act 1. This was later confirmed when Chixie Roimer shows up again in Hive Swap Act 2. Chixie is one of the trolls you can interact with on the train station platform in your quest to get tickets to board. Chixie initially tries to dissuade Joey and Zephros from attending Javik Week due to what will be the surprise appearance of the mask at the event, and the riot that is sure to follow. She eventually slips that she usually gets her orders and assistance from a Tetrarch D, 
which everyone, including Zephros, knows is Domek. This reveals to the players that Chixie has stayed in contact with Domek between the events of Friend Sim and Hive Swap. The hits keep coming when it's revealed that not only did Domek keep both parties from knowing about each other professionally, Chixie notes that she was promised to be the fourth Tetrarch under the Revolution, and Domek told her he didn't have time for quadrants. Considering that Zephros was also promised the fourth Tetrarch seat, and acted as Domek's Moirail for sweeps, someone is being lied to. Needless to say, nothing is going to change Chixie's mind about protesting at Javik Week. Actually, that's a lie. There are four ways to get Chixie to give up on Javik Week. First of all, Joey can convince her if you let Joey talk to Chixie, then have Zephros talk to her, back to Joey again, and then give her Zephros's mic. Or you can ask Zebra Kodak Elward, or even Marvis Sholoto himself to talk her out of it for you. Each option leads to a different achievement. However, she can show up on the Rustblood train later if you only take Zebra Kodak's ticket. This is the only way to get the achievement, standing room only. Oh gosh, this means I have to play through Hive Swap Back 2 again if I want all those achievements. Ah, oh, no. And that's all the fridge facts I have for the bronze-blooded trolls of Friend Sim. I hope you enjoyed. There are probably headcanons aplenty out there, so you'll have to forgive me if I missed one or if I didn't think to include it. We've got a few more stops to make on the Friend Sim fridge train, and I hope to see you all for the next one when we cover the Golden Bloods. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you all next time. Bye! If you're not a lizard, why are you white? Sorry. <laughs> hey there. Consider becoming a patron, just like the phenomenal Bleed Red, Alexander Madeline, and Cloudy Days.